Hello and welcome to another Rotors Flight Tips. This time we're going to talk a bit about something that the new guys will be interested in. We'll talk about hovering and the differences between some of the, the introductory models that you might buy from your local gadget shop to the big stuff like the T-Rexes and the Garys and you know, the, the what we call proper heli. So, first of all, let's talk about your role and pitch because this is a very basic thing we need to talk about first um, because I'm going to talk about a little about the controls and what the controls do. So first of all you've got the your control which is ma making the model look to the left and look to the right. Uh, that's controlled by the tower rotor on the back. Secondly you've then got roll which is the, which is the model tilting to the left and to the right and pitch which is the model tilting forwards and backwards. Now the roll and the pitch are quite often called grouped together and called the cyclic control. So we'll talk about it about that later. Now, lastly, we then have the um, collective pitch. And on some models, it's just a pure throttle. And other other ones, they're actually changing the pitch of the rotors. And what that's doing is increasing the amount of lift that the the rotor system is created and making the model go up or down. So that brings us neatly on to some of the cheap stuff. That you've probably played with some of the gadget, what, what I call the gadget shop stuff. So, firstly, we've got this little thing here, it's a coaxial, so it's got two rotor blades on top of each other on the same axis, hence coaxial. And um, they're three channel, so there's not an awful lot of control here. You have a throttle and a forwards and backward cyclic control, so the pitch, and you have a yaw control. So the problem with these is that the controls generally aren't on the right sticks compared to the bigger stuff. So if you've been flying one of these and being pretty confident, then you'll notice that the your control is on, or most of them is on the right stick, with the throttle on the left and the elevator on the right. So whereas normally what we do is we put the put the your control on the left stick with the throttle or the collective. So if you've been flying one of those, you might get a bit of a surprise when you come and fly something a little bit bigger. Now, if you've never flown a helicopter before, or anything like that before, um, you really want to look at something like this. Little mini quads. They're about 40 quid. Um, I've been using the uh, big little thing called a Hubson X4, which is a great little model. Um, you can get them from you know, nice reputable places. Uh, I would personally recommend Scholar Models and Fastlab uh, for these. They're, they're about 40 quid, just under 40 quid, so not terribly cheap, but they do the job quite nicely. Um, and they're nice and easy to fly. They self they do a thing called self level, so they if you let go of the sticks they will come back to where you where you want them to be. Brilliant. Um, and those are uh, have the wooden controls in the right places. So on the right stick you have the both side sticks, so the forward and backwards and left and right, so uh, roll and pitch. And on the left stick you have the throttle and the uh, your control, the rudder. Um, the one thing you do have to watch though is that uh, there is two what we call modes. There's mode one and mode two. Now most helicopter pilots fly mode two. Mode one, they swap the elevator and the collective around the it Doesn't make an as much sense for helicopters, but so just be aware that. The vast majority of people that fly helicopters will be flying mode 2, so um, you want to make sure you try and get the mode 2 one. But um, yeah, so that's something to look out for. So make sure you get the mode 2 version. Otherwise, when you go, if you do get a bigger helicopter later on and you go to a club for some help, uh, they won't be able to fly it necessarily if you're flying on mode 1. So just be aware of that. Um, so yeah, so that's the basic controls. Um, Let's go and have a look at the simulator. Um, this is a simulator of accuracy. It's a um, nice little bit of kit. It's about ninety pounds, and you have to use your, use your radio. But if you're going to be, um, you want to be flying big, big stuff, then it's something you definitely want to be looking at um, before you start flying your own model. Because, as you'll see in a minute, uh, helicopters aren't particularly easy to fly. Uh, if you've never flown one before, you probably will crash it. So it's worth getting the simulator and doing all, all your initial crashing on the simulator first. Okay. Um, so 
Right, as you can see, it's fucking, you know, it's, it's, this is a pretty accurate simulator. It's, it's one of, as far as I'm concerned, it's the most accurate flying simulator on the market. And, um, and I like it. And I know the devs, the developers of it very well, and they're really, really, really knowledgeable people. They, they know their stuff. So, let's show you what these controls do then. So, first of all, we've got the cyclic controls. So, we've got the forwards and back of the elevator. So, when I push the stick forwards, the model will rotate, will rotate nose down, will pitch nose down, and then it, and when I let go of the stick, it will stay in that position, so it doesn't self-level the standard. Um, and that's the way helicopters are on the flight sticks. They, you push the stick over, and it will rotate, and then you let go, and it will stay in that position. And what, that's one of the things that makes the aerobatics that we do possible: is that neutral stability. It stays in the attitude where you left it. So, and the roll control is very similar. So you push the stick to the left, and it rolls to the left, and then it will start moving to the left. And then you roll it to the right, it will slow down, and it will, and then it will start moving to the right. So if you keep the model level, it's kind of like balancing a marble on a sheet of glass, or in a mirror or something like that. So if you if you tilt the mirror around, the marble will move around the the, the glass. But then if you hold it level it will then eventually come to a stop and it will stay still. So that's that's how helicopters kind of hover. And that's how you hold them still. And that's how you move them around as well. So then we've got the collective on the left hand stick. Now on um, on bigger models they have uh, they have two this is actually controlling two controls. You've got the throttle, the output from the engine, and then you've got the collective pitch as well. So this is changing the pitch of the blades. Now, what we, the way we set these things up is that the, the throttle will give a constant uh, rotor speed. So the head speed of the, of the rotor stays the same, and then the collective pitch changes. So once you get above about quarter stick on the, on the, on the collective, the, the head speed will come up to a, a fixed RPM, and we've got things like governors and all this sort of stuff as well that, that, will, that you can set up to, to aid it, make this more consistent. Um, it's really useful for your better stuff later on. And um, once you get above quarter stick, it should be a fairly consistent, or it should be an ideal world, it should be the same RPM, same head speed the whole time, no matter where the collective is. So literally you're just changing the pitch of the blades, and the throttle is there to, to make that RPM the same. Depending on the load, but as you increase, as you increase the collective, the load goes up. So, yeah, so that's nice and simple. And then, not just, well, not quite simple, but it's pretty simple. And then you've got your control. Now, there's um, there's a gyro on the tail, and uh, this, and it makes it a lot easier because as you're moving the collective around, the, the torque from the motor's changing, and that can kick the tail. So. It's quite important that the tail rotor setup is, is really, really good because if it's not, then when you move the collector around, the tail will kick and then it will be more difficult for you to control the model because the model's not pointing in the direction where you thought it was. So, if you have the stick, the, the rudder stick, the, the your control stick in the middle, then nothing happens and it will stay still. If you move the stick to the left, then it will model pirouette, the nose of the model will pirouette to the left, and if you Move the stick to the right, so the model will correct to the right. And then when you let go, it stops. And that's it. That's nice and simple. Um, the gyro on, and servos on, on these things are really, really clever and really, really powerful. And they will they, they will put in a lot of effort to make the model stay in the attitude where you left it. And, um, and that's pretty much how the controls work. So uh, let's have a look at... Uh, hovering thing, shall we? So, as I said, it's a bit like holding the model, holding a, a, a marble on a sheet of glass. You know, it, it, tiny, tiny movements will make the will make the marble move around. You don't need to move very much. So, so the movements you use on the stick to, to keep the model level also equally need to be very, very small because as soon as you start waggling the sticks around, it's going to start banking and pitching all over the place and so you you, you, know, you barely even move the stick it's more of a pressure on the stick than the movement so if you're if you're using lots of stick movement then the model will be moving around a lot so then it won't sit in a hover so it's just 
tiny, tiny movements, little, little pressures, and then waiting for the model to respond. Now, one of the great features in the simulators is that they give you things that you don't necessarily get in real life. Things like a reset button, but also uh, accuracy is a little thing called active stability. And what that does is it adds in self-level, and you can control how quickly the model self-levels. So as your ability improves, if you can ca if you get on top of the model quicker, you can drop the stability gain down, and then the model will self-level slower. So then you can get it will ease you into the uh, into the flying. It's a really useful little feature in the simulator. It effectively makes that flat glass mirror into a slightly bowl shape, and the higher the gain. The bigger the bowl, the steep, the deeper the bowl, so the more it will try and self-level. Hopefully, that's been quite a nice little insight into the world of ready control helicopters and the differences between the, the uh, gadget store type of things and the more expensive, high-end stuff like you see the uh, top 3D pilots flying. And um, if you've got any questions or any uh, anything like that, any comments, then uh, drop them in the comments below and uh, or drop me a message to uh, rotate themselves. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, hopefully that's been useful. Bye!